place on earth that God seems to be really fond of? That's right, an everyday place with streets and buildings and people. Not a metaphor or a hypothetical, a geographical location. And it's called Jerusalem. Over the years, all sorts of wars have broken out around Jerusalem, and many terrible things have happened to this city. So naturally, many efforts have been made to fix problems that keep popping up. Like the passing of hundreds of UN resolutions, or awarding the Nobel Peace Prize to Yasser Arafat. Heck, even Bill Clinton tried playing his saxophone when all else failed. But it seems like the more we try to fix things, the worse things come. Now, we could continue coming up with elaborate strategies and complex plans to restore peace and well-being to Jerusalem, but sometimes the most complex problems are solved in the simplest ways. So what we decided to do, and what we're asking you to do, is the simplest thing anybody possibly could do. Pray. That's right, pray. You might be thinking, well, I live in Ireland or New Zealand or Nebraska. Why should I pray for a city I've never been to? Well, to give credit where credit is due, the idea has been around for a while. And it turns out we're actually commanded to pray for Jerusalem. See, we told you God was fond of them. And then there's always the possibility that praying for peace and goodwill is always the right thing to do. Amen. Now, we thought that praying for the peace of Jerusalem might sound complicated or like a lot of work. So we had the bright idea of starting small and keeping it super simple. What if we began by praying on one day every year? Just one. Sort of how we in America eat turkey the fourth Thursday of every November, or how Canadians celebrate their national animal on Beaver Day, the last Friday in February. What if we prayed for the peace of Jerusalem the first Sunday of every October, just making it a part of our prayer service that week? God might think it's really cool to have his children praying in different languages, in different ways, for the very same thing. And while some remain skeptical that prayer makes a difference, Hundreds of thousands have already committed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem this one day a year. Who knows? Maybe prayer will remind us that we're not in charge of the world to begin with. Or maybe prayer will move God's heart to do something wonderful in Jerusalem. Or maybe, just maybe, prayer will change us. Let's find out. Sign the prayer resolution and mark your calendar for the first Sunday of every October. And join us and the world as we unite in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. First Sunday in October, that was last Sunday. All right, so you may wonder, okay, so why did we play this 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 Sunday? Well, it's because I didn't find this soon enough. But um, it is significant. But there's another significance within, <clears throat> within this video that has really been impressed upon me. And I, I want to see if I can convey this to you. All right, <clears throat> praying for the peace of Jerusalem is significant. We need to do this, all right? But did you notice in that video that they singled out the state of Nebraska? Now, I wanna, I wanna point something out to you. This organization does not have a tie to Nebraska, all right? This is a, wor this is a worldwide movement they are pushing. Right, they mentioned Ireland, I can't remember, New Zealand, and Nebraska. Why did they mention Nebraska? And I even I want to appeal to you in this regard. Even President Trump, in his inaugural address, mentioned the state of Nebraska. And I think God is calling out the state of Nebraska to be... <clears throat> To be significant. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna back up here a minute. I'm gonna come back to that point, but I want to say a couple things about um, President Trump made a promise. He was going to move the embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Right? There have been several presidents recently that have promised to do that. President Trump is the one who did it, and he did it very quickly. I want to mention something else that President Trump promised to do that 
he has, has done. Um, <clears throat> he promised to um, support faith-based organizations. And he, <clears throat> he created 11 offices amongst departments in his administration. These offices for the purpose of partnering with faith-based organizations to bring public uh, policy change, right? Those, those offices, right? He has put people in charge. He has pointed people in those offices for this very purpose, right? <clears throat> they are the Department of Education, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Labor. There's eight other other offices that he has opened up with this specific purpose. If you want a copy, if you want to pray for these offices and these people that, that President Trump has placed in for that specific purpose, I've got copies of who those people are, what those offices are, and how they potentially can affect public policy. All right, so if you want that, you ask me for it. Now, I want to come back to the significance of Nebraska. All right, I'm going to compare this to a, a neighboring state, Iowa. Iowa wants to be significant in the earthly realm. I see this in various ways. Iowa has been a very liberal state because they have tried to be very significant in the earthly realm, right? They have their caucus. So the very first presidential caucus is in Iowa, right? <clears throat> Two weeks ago, the University of Iowa kicked every Christian organization off their campus. Two weeks ago, every one. Now, thank goodness that President Trump is putting conservative judges in offices. One federal judge said, you can't do that and reinstated those, those organizations on the University of Iowa. But, okay, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not trying to tear Iowa down. I'm just pointing out that Iowa wants to be significant in the earthly realm. <clears throat> I think Nebraska is realistic in this regard. We know we don't have the numbers, we don't have the presence, we, we, are, we can't be that significant on the earthly realm, but we can be significant in the heavenly realm, Amen. right? Amen. And, I, and I want to point to, um, Pastor Tim has talked to us about this in the last two weeks. He has said, we need to be significant in the heavenly realm. Forget the earthly realm. We need to be significant in the heavenly realm. I... <clears throat> There is, in, in Mark 16, 18, it says, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. See, I, and I think, too, that God calls upon the corporate body. I think it's very important that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. It's a corporate thing. We've got to be significant in the heavenly realm on the corporate church level. All right, so our president, we know, has been under assault. He's been under assault since the day he got in office. And, and, uh, and they, and right now with the impeachment proceedings going on, they want to take him out of this office, okay? I'm not, if you don't like something about President Trump, that's okay. But I'm going to tell you something. He's been put in office for such a time as this. Amen. And I, and, I, and I really believe I could build a case for you to tell you that he's in office for such a time as this. All right. Now, I think, I think I'm right here. I think Cindy, in the class that she's doing on Monday nights with the prayer petition, I think she's called on the ladies to develop a prayer petition for President Trump. I, I think I'm right. I think anybody can verify that. Okay, all right. Well, I want to give you some ammo for a prayer, a petition for President Trump. How
how to build a prayer of petition. <clears throat> All right. This goes back to 2 Samuel chapter 14 through 18. What we have is we have Absalom was trying to take the throne of his father, David, right? David was the um, God-ordained leader of Israel. It was not Absalom's place to take that from David. It was not his place, but he, he orchestrated things. And <clears throat> what he did is he sat at the gate, and anybody who came with a complaint, he would listen to them. And he said, well, David doesn't have anybody here to hear your complaint. And so, but, but if I was in, if I was the king, I would listen and make sure you got justice. And so he won the hearts of the people. And then David was told, okay, Absalom has won the hearts of the people. And David knew he was in trouble. So what David did is he gathered his family and his men and he ran. I mean, he ran, he was afraid. He ran immediately. He took, he took his, and he ran. Now, um, <clears throat> David had an advisor. His name was Ahithophel. Ahithophel went over and Absalom got him into Absalom's camp. Right? <coughs> David and Absalom highly regarded this man's um, this man's advice. And so, in that scripture passage tells you that that uh, that they, they considered his advice even to be at the level of what God would tell the people to do. And so, ah Ahithophel told Absalom, go after David immediately. Don't wait. Get him now. Go tonight. Absalom said, okay, so David, when he fleed, David prayed, he said, he prayed that, he prayed, oh Lord, please turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. See, David prayed that God would frustrate the good advice that Ahithophel brought to him. And, and here's what, here's what Absalom did. Absalom went, and he said, no, 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 I want to hear what Hushai has to say. And so Hushai goes, comes to him and says, you know what, Absalom, no, Ahithophel's advice in this case is not good. Go, <clears throat> go in and gather the, all, all of them, all the 100,000 troops. And, and, and then once you gather all of them, Go after David and annihilate all of them so that you have no opposition. And Absalom said, that advice is better than Ahithophel's advice. So that's what he did. But in the meantime, God allowed David to, <clears throat> to uh, put his troops in order. And get his things in his things in order. And when they came after him, David, David's men won that battle. Actually, twenty thousand men of Israel died in that battle. Yeah. And but David's men defeated them in there. And but here's the point. Absalom had no right to that throne. And I'm telling you today, I don't believe that the, liberal, the liberals in our country that want to take President Trump out have any right to do that. Amen. I think it's parallel. They have no right to do it. And I think, and I'm asking you, we've got to stand together on this. And I, I want to point out one very significant thing to me about Absalom. Okay, in chapter 14 of 2 Samuel, it says, and when he cut his hair, this is Absalom, when he cut his hair of his head, for at the end of every year he used to cut it, 
when it was too heavy for him. You see, that was the thing that he was so proud of. Absalom's hair must have been long and wavy, and you know, it was it was a signature item on him, his pride. He was so proud. It said that he would weigh it after, after he would cut it. He would weigh it. And you know what? Do you know what God did? When they went to battle with David, God hung him in a tree by his hair. Yeah, the very thing that was his pride and joy, his pride, God hung him by his pride. Now, I, I might be taking lib be liberal here in what I, I'm going to say here, but I, when they're going to battle, I can't believe that Absalom didn't have a sword or a knife or something on him. Right? He's going into battle here. Right? I can't believe that he couldn't have cut his hair off to get out of that tree, but he didn't. Okay? The scripture doesn't tell us this. I'm, I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm taking some liberality here, but, but I can't believe he couldn't have cut his hair in some manner, but he hung in that tree, but he didn't. He didn't. And that was his downfall. He hung in that tree, and David's men found him and, and killed him. Now, here, here's my point. Here's what I'm, I'm, I'm calling us to do. I believe God wants Nebraska to be significant in the heavenly realm. Right? Will you stand with me here? Can we be significant in the heavenly realm? And then, and then, I think we need to draft a prayer, a petition on behalf of President Trump, that we that we, we that we call upon um, to because I don't think we have the right to take what God has ordained and take this away. And I'm asking you to stand with me in this. Um, now. Just even now, right, today, I'd like us to pray. And, you know, we don't have to do anything lengthy right now. But I but I am uh, asking you, would you pray with me? Would you call upon the name of the Lord with me? The one thing that we have to do here is you got to, this is the time you plagiarize. Okay? When we have to agree upon something, we need to plagiarize. Okay, you got to take. We got to say the same thing over and over again. We've got to agree upon this. Plagiarism was okay here. All right, all right. If you're able to, would you stand with me? All right. I need. Would who would start us out? Who could start us? Who's willing to start us to call upon the name of the Lord? Somebody willing? Father God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word, Father God. And we come before you this morning, Lord God, and we agree with your word. We agree with the message that Greg has given us today, Lord God. We agree with the statement that Nebraska wants to be significant in the spiritual realm. Nebraska wants to be significant in bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth, in declaring God's will to be done. Father God, and not only do we need to agree with each other, we need to agree with you, Father God. And so we just... Um, we just take upon us that challenge that Greg has offered, Lord God, to draft a prayer, and not just for President Trump, but for this nation, for our state, for our city, for our families, for our homes. And Father, if we draft a prayer that agrees with your word, that agrees with all heaven. God, you will hear. You will answer. We thank you, Lord God. 
Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for peace in this United States, Lord God. We pray for peace in our politics, for truth in our politics. We pray for peace in our city, Lord God. Your word says violence will no more be heard in your land, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. And we declare that, Lord God, over our city this morning, over our state, over our nation. Violence will no longer be heard in your land. You will call your gates salvation. Uh, your court salvation or gate praise. I don't remember now. Father God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your word. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to agree with your word and to declare the truth of your word over our lives, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is somebody else willing to pray? Can you put your hand up if you're willing to pray? Dear Lord, you know the lot of damage that's been done to our nation in the last decade. And Lord, we believe that President Trump has been raised up to try to retrieve, to try to fix, to try to recover that which has been lost to Americans. Oh Lord God, I ask you to open his eyes, open his eyes, help him to humble himself before you, almighty God. Touch his heart, touch his heart, Lord, so that he knows that every single day he must bow before you and come to you for advice and cause him to surround himself with Holy Spirit-filled counselors, Lord, who are in touch with you. And let there not be one traitor, not one enemy in his camp. Lord, we ask you to protect his gates, Lord. We ask you to protect the gates of the White House, Lord, so that no enemy will be able to come against our nation. And Lord, we also ask you to please help him to receive the truth that is happening around our nation. Lord, we ask you not to allow the enemy to, to hamper his efforts to defend our nation, Lord whether it's building a wall to keep the enemy out, Lord, or whether it's acknowledging the 126 terrorist training camps across our nation, Lord, where the enemy would like to come in like a Trojan horse and destroy our nation. Lord, we declare that it shall not come to pass. In the name of Jesus, it shall not come to pass. And we thank you that you have brought this dedicated man Lord, let him not give up hope. Cause us to pray every single day for his encouragement, Lord, for his protection over him and his family and his staff, Lord. And we pray also for the secret service that there is not one failure, not one traitor. Lord, we pray that they will all be dedicated to protecting him and his life. And Lord, if he has to call up the Marines, as many people are saying that he has. If the White House is truly under lockdown right now, which rumor has it, Lord, we pray that he will be protected and that this whole scandal, this whole attempt, this ruse will be overturned and the truth will be revealed to the American people and that they will open their eyes and they will see what has been done to us, but that they will no longer allow it. In the name of Jesus. Somebody else like to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy the kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Father Give us God, it says on earth as it is in heaven. And this is the key prayer that I ask for today, Lord God. May your will be done. May your peace be shown. May your glory be shown on earth as it is in heaven. May truth be shown. 
Nor God, what is ever in the darkness, to be shown in the light. Whatever is in secret, be shown in the light. I ask that you would open the eyes of our hearts and our understanding. The American people, Lord God, the United States of America, to see what is truth and what is a lie. In the name of Jesus, that you will have key people that will surround those that need to hear the truth. Not only of what is going on in the United States, many people don't want to be involved in politics, but they have to be. They have to know and understand because we are in a spiritual war, Father God. And I pray in the name of Jesus. We already know the end of the, the story, Father God. We know that you will be glorified. You will come for um, you will come for us one day, Father God. But while we are here, I pray in the name of Jesus that your anointing will be upon us as believers to rise up and speak what is true. But most of all, Father God, in the middle of all of that, that your name will be lifted up. Because that's what draws all men to you, Father God. And I pray that we would go in peace, not in anger, not in our opinions, but we will go in peace. And I thank you, Father God, that you will give each and every one of us the understanding and the words to say. Lord God, I thank you, Father God, for your anointing upon the United States of America, upon every believer in the United States of America and that every believer in the United States will rise up and take a stand for what is true and what is right. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. churches, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. They will rise up. They will not sit, Lord God. They will go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They, in the name of Jesus in this nation, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Holy Spirit. No, no, that I pray, Father God, for, for Washington, D.C., Lord God, in the name of Jesus, all of those protesters, Lord God, wipe them out in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, flood them out. Every, every one of them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, you flood Open the floodgates of heaven in this nation, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. No weapon to form against this nation will prosper. For greater is he that is in this nation than he that is in the world. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I bind you, Satan, if you have it. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke the spirit of of that of you of, of you to if you have every bit of thing that you're trying to to do whatever you're trying to do I I com I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus you leave right now in the name of Jesus I shut the mouths of the lions right now in the name of Jesus you have no authority in this nation says we are children of God. We are children of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Lord, Lord, I, we, well, we acknowledge that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And you are the one that puts rulers in, in authority. You place kings in their places. And Lord, <clears throat> we recognize by your word that you gave us the example <clears throat> when Absalom tried to take the throne from his father David. When it was not ordained by you, 
Lord, you, you brought an end to that. Lord, and we pray that same thing now. And in our nation, Lord, I believe that you put President Trump in the office now for such a time as this. And I pray that the plans of man would not prevail against your plans. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just come, <clears throat> Lord, in the heavenly realms, you fight the battles. Lord, you confuse, <clears throat> Lord, well, frustrate the good advice, Lord, that <clears throat> comes against your plans and purposes. Lord, preserve what you have done. We commit that to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name.